Welcome you to First Church. I'm David Rennick, your pastor. Today is a very special day in the life of our church. It is Youth Sunday, and we are allowing, or not allowing, we're having our youth lead us in uh, the energy that they bring, but also the excitement of how they serve around the world, in the community, and in those spaces and places through missions. Uh, I'm excited to hear the message that they will bring, their enthusiasm, but most of all, a reminder of how we continue to nurture one another in our faith journey. Here in these tents where refugees mourn for homes they have fled. Here in our communities where teenagers struggle against drugs and gangs. Here in our world where people die because of the color of their skin. Give strength to our love that where life struggles to prevail, we would bring you renewing spirit. Hi everyone, I'm Emily and this is Josh and this is Alyssa. Have you ever heard someone say, wait just a minute? Well, sometimes a minute can seem like a long time. Other times, a minute can fly by. This morning, I have brought a timer with me, and I'm going to set it for 30 seconds. I want you to list off all the different foods that you like to eat. Are you ready? Okay, ready, set, go. Fried chicken. Mashed potatoes. Spaghetti. Um, ice cream. Brownies. Um, tacos. Lima beans? Ravioli? <laughs> Lasagna? Nothing? Salad? <laughs> Pickles? Pizza um, rolls? Popcorn? <laughs> What's your favorite food, Erin? No spaghetti. 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 Now, did you say all your favorite foods? Have you ever been hungry? And I mean really, really hungry, with no hope that you would ever get anything to eat today, tomorrow, or even the next week? Recently, the three of us participated in a 30-hour famine, which gave us a taste of what it's like to be really hungry. Sometimes we forget that not everyone in the world has plenty to eat. One day, Jesus was speaking to a group of people, and he said to them, I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. When did we do that, they asked. Jesus answered them, if you did it for one of the least of my children, you did it for me. We have a lot to be thankful for, don't we? The question is, are we willing to share it with those who are not so fortunate? Will you share what you have with those in need? But you have to remember, it is the same as doing it for Jesus. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, you have given us so much. May we be willing to share it with those in need. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <laughs>
Today's scripture is from the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 35 through 40. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it for me. This is the word of God for the people of God. As many of you know, when I first started going to this church, I was just about to start my freshman year in high school. Uh, when I got here, I had the chance to go to Sunday school and youth group. I was a little hesitant at first, but I did go to it. Um, when I, once I got there, I was really happy that I made the choice to do that. I loved it. Uh, my first year was really great. I had a lot of fun and made, a gr and made great friends. And that next summer, I went on my first mission trip. I was a little weary about going to, on the mission trip because I had never done a service project like that before. 
I really hadn't done any service projects for a church before. But I was really happy that I did go. I, once I got there, I loved it. I loved helping out people. And I, when we did a lot of service work there. Uh, Uh, once I got there, you know, we s prepared our own meals, and then we prepared meals for the homeless in San Diego. And I think that volunteering is how I learned what it really meant to be a Methodist. When I was volunteering, I was around a lot of homeless people who didn't have much. In fact, they didn't. They only had the clothes on their backs and what a few items they could carry. I noticed that it felt really good to serve in that community, as much as I felt bad for them. And all the youth were surprised by how bad the homeless uh, problem was in that community. It was the kind of experience that makes you really think about what you have back home and appreciate things even more. Uh, in that same mission trip, I was able to go to a visit the elderly in a nursing home. That was a fun experience because I got to visit with some older people who probably didn't have as many visitors as they would like. And after that, we all talked later on about our experiences and how the people reminded us of our families, grandparents, and other people that we might know. It was a fun activity. Uh, I've made friends through the youth group and mission trips that I know I'll have for a long time, and I still talk to today. My sophomore year, I wanted to be confirmed in the church and learn even more about being a Methodist. I was happy with this decision because I got to learn a lot about our Methodist religion and then a little bit about how well, others differ from ours. I could tell that I was really growing, maturing, and understanding who I am and what I believe in. I was active in the youth, I was participating in service projects, and I knew what it meant to be a Methodist, but also what it meant to be an adult, someone who's mature and responsible. I then went on to another mission trip the next summer, and that one was probably my favorite because I got to serve in a low-income community in Smith River, California. I got to help a family that was less fortunate. I put a, I basically redid their roof, oof, and and that was really fun because I got to do hard work and I got to learn more about you know, team building and other things like that. I have even made some new friends on that trip, but having the feeling of doing good in the world really made me feel good. I love helping others even if it's not on a mission trip. I'm always asking people if they ever need anything, if they ever need help with anything. I just hate the feeling of sitting around and doing nothing. I also like to do service work right here in my own state with the youth group. A few weekends ago, I got to go live like the homeless in cardboard boxes for a night, and then the next morning, go and do some more service work. All this while doing a 30-hour famine. It really taught me to appreciate what I had and uh, that I get to eat every day. And most of the kids in the youth group have never done anything like that before. And it was good for them to have that, these experiences. Another day we served at UMOM, uh, helping feed uh, more low-income families. And at Christmas time we, had, we got to shop around for a family that can afford Christmas presents. Uh, these are all really good experiences and have helped me grow into an adult, a Methodist, and just really a decent human being. That feeling of helping someone out is like no other. It's kind of nice and fuzzy and warm on the inside. You know what I'm talking about? To be able to see the smile on someone's face when you feed them in, when they haven't eaten in a while, or when an elderly person is enjoying your company even though you don't know them and they don't know you, that feeling. When you feel so good about the work that you're doing that you just want to do more service work. Doing all this service work reminds me of a quote by John Wesley. Do all the good you can by all the means you can and all the ways you can and all the places you can to at all the times you, pe you can to all the people you can as long as you ever can. Which this re quote really ties in with the scripture today as well. 
when we do service work, we don't just do it for fun, but we do it to help others. Don't do it just for our own good, but to help those less fortunate, not for the rich, but for the poor. And you don't do it for the people that already have everything, but those for who need it. This youth group and participating in services work is really how I learned what it meant to be a Methodist. It's not about memorizing Bible verses or going to church every Sunday, but helping out others and feeding the hungry, giving water to the thirsty, housing the homeless, clothing the naked, and giving medicine to the sick. Now, to make a quick announcement that goes along with all of this, as we start to near towards the summer, uh, the youth is going to be going on another mission trip. For seniors like Casey and myself, this will be our last one. And this time we're going to be heading to Stockton, California. And I'm really excited about this. But to do this, we will need help from you guys, the congregation and members of the church. We need donations to help fund the trip because like most things, it's not free and can't fund itself. So today after the service uh, in the North X, uh, we have uh, two bulletin boards with some envelopes attached to it. And written on these envelopes are different amounts of money. We're calling it our wall of money. If you wish, you can take an envelope down and fill it with the amount of money labeled on the front. Uh, and if you don't, if you want to think about it, you can. We're going to be having this up for a while. But we will really appreciate anything that you can give to the youth. Uh, and thank you. Uh, good morning. My name is Casey. Um, I'm a senior, so this is my last Youth Sunday, but it's great to be here. Um, I'm here to talk about mission work, so I thought I'd share about um, last year's mission trip. Um, my service project for the week was to paint a house for a woman named Donna, and we also went to the canyon lands where we pulled like plants that didn't need to be there so that we could save some of the other wildlife that was living there. Um, and that was our work for the week. Um, so we did these service projects for five days, and each of the days had a specific theme. Um, the first day was restore, and the idea behind restore was to restore ourselves as beloved children of God. We had to love ourselves as God loves us so that we would be able to love one another as God loves them. The second day was reframe, and for reframe, they made us aware of all of the um, prejudgments and stereotypes that society has placed on certain people so that we would be able to go into our service projects and really help these people without judging them. Um, the third day was rejuvenate, and this was the day where we went out into the community and visited places that were really important to the community. And one of the places that my group went to was this church, um, and it's not really a church anymore. It, it started out as a really big church because it was the only church in the area, but then as more churches came, um, it got smaller and smaller, and it, didn't ha and it got to the point where it didn't have a congregation anymore. So the people that were left at that church decided that they still wanted to help their community. So this church that didn't have a congregation um, turned their church into an outreach center. So it was a homeless shelter, it was a food bank, and it was a place where um, people of all religions could come and have a place of worship that was safe and peaceful. Um, day four was reflect, and for this day we talked about things that we often take for granted like clean water or a place to sleep, but also things like always having our parents with us, you know, for us teenagers. Um, one of the, the pastor at the church that we were staying at came and told us some stories about some people that he knew, and one of them was a woman named Elsa. And Elsa was born in Mexico, and she was a Mexican citizen, but her family moved to San Diego, and they were there legally, but they were living in San Diego. They weren't US citizens. And every summer, they would take trips back to Mexico to visit family and just, you know, whatever. And so um, when Elsa was in her 20s, she had a baby in the U.S. And so her baby was a U.S. citizen. And when her baby was born, they told her that, 
you know, those trips that you've been making every summer to Mexico are a violation of your immigration status. So you have to be deported and your baby has to stay here. And they told us these stories that we would be grateful for the things that we have. Um, <clears throat> the last day was rejoice. Um, this was the day where we all shared um, what we appreciated about one another. And it was a really great experience because you got to see the impact you made on everyone, not just the people that you were serving, but the people you were spending the week with and doing the service with. Um, so God calls us to love ourselves, to love one another, and to serve one another. So. I want to say thank you for everyone who makes our mission trips possible, whether it's our youth leader, our um, parents who send us off for a week, or the people who donate money uh, for us to go and do these things. Because without you guys, we wouldn't have these great opportunities to help all these people. So thank you. Amen. Oh God, you took upon the yoke of humanity and the burden of love, and you did not find it easy. Let us pray. God, all of us, we give you thanks for this day that you have given us to celebrate the young people of this congregation. As we celebrate their lives and their ministries, we are mindful of all the generations that have come before each other, taking their turn to be celebrated as young life, the holy future of the church. We know that it is our turn to be celebrated as the young life of the holy future of your church. We know that it is our turn because they were faithful in their turn and remain faithful to this day. As we celebrate our youth and our future, help us in turn to be faithful as they were for all of their lives. We ask your blessings on our youth members and on, the, on their leaders. You have called them already to many acts of mercy and service and lead, led them to new places of faith. Be with them as long as they go forward that they may continue to find you leading them in your ways, guiding and uplifting them in all what they do. May they hear your voice clearly and listen well to your word. May they all of us, may all of us gather here and be blessed to be a blessing. Eternal God, help us to be the hand and feet of Jesus that willingly serve with a faithful servant's heart. Help us to keep our hearts, minds, and doors open to those who struggle and need to feel your love.
keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, amen. God asks, asks us and Jesus to share his anger. Or love is abused or the poor exploited. Or is this is true religion. 